I've gotten a lot of requests to share my everyday makeup routine, so that's what's going on in my face right now. If you wanna know how I achieve this look, stick around. If you're new to the channel, I am so happy to have you here. My name is Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. And I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As my life has gotten busier, especially after the birth of my son, I realized like I don't have 30 minutes to sit in front of the mirror and do my makeup on most days. I have like a good five to seven minutes. So this is sort of my pared down routine that I do when I'm trying to get out the door, but I still want to feel really confident and good in my skin. So usually I do my makeup and then I do my hair and then I get dressed, but because we're in sort of like a mock neck situation, the makeup had to come last. Otherwise it would get absolutely destroyed when I put the shirt on. The only thing I have on my skin right now is the Perito Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen. So if I'm in a rush and I need to have the most bare bones of skincare routine, just sunscreen is absolutely fine. Step one, bring some life back to the eyebrows. I have a very minimalist brow routine, especially if I'm not going to be on camera. If it's just like an in-person situation, I wanna look good or decent when I'm running errands, then really what I want is something that's going to help keep my brows lifted up, separated, and in place. So I'm going in with my Bay Brow Clear Brow Gel. And this is itty bitty spoolie there. And I'm just going to start at the front of my brow and comb upward. And this helps just grab all the brows and put them in line. If I was going to be on camera, I would want to go in maybe with something that's going to thicken these up, give a little bit more coverage, give me a little bit of a darker brow even. But for day to day, this is all all I really need. And you can just see subtle difference, but makes a difference. So we'll just get those up and away. I have deep set eyes and a relatively low flat brow. So I do find that raising up the eyebrow a bit just brings a little bit more light into the eye space. So we're done with brows. The next thing I'm going to do is conceal because as you may have noticed already, I'm having a little hormonal breakout and I do get some redness, especially around my nose. And if my rosacea flares while I'm out, definitely on my cheeks. So just wanna kind of get that locked and loaded in place. I don't do a full face of foundation for a quick run out the door type of makeup look. I just use concealer instead. My current concealer obsession is the Huda Beauty. This is the faux filter concealer. This got sent to me as a sample, not like this particular one, but it came as this itty bitty sample from a prior Sephora order. And so I got to try it a little bit and that type of marketing completely worked on me because I used that little sample up and then I was like, wow, I have really liked using this concealer. So I went out and bought some more. I am using the shade Coconut Flakes 2.7 N, which is slightly lighter than my skin tone. When I first put it on, it looks a lot lighter. And then after it's sat on my skin for a bit, it darkens up a little bit. And I'll show you what the applicator looks like. So it's like a big doe foot applicator. This is incredibly pigmented, so you just need the tiniest bit. So even once I take it out, I wipe most of it off there. And then I'll just kind of like, where I want to brighten a little bit. Definitely around the nose. Tons of broken blood vessels there, even with laser. Even with getting a V-beam laser a few times a year, I still will get these vessels around my nose that come back all the time. It's very annoying. And then we're gonna go over all these little spots just to even things out. I have a little PIH back here that we'll cover up too. All right, I'm gonna let that sit and get a little bit tacky and then I'm gonna blend it out. Depending on the day and what I have access to, I will often just tap this in with my finger, but I do have my makeup bag here, so let's use a brush. I'm going in with my Hourglass. I think this is just their concealer brush. It doesn't say on here, but it's nice because it's a little angled tip there, so it fits really nicely into this space. And I really like to bring the concealer into the corner of my eye. Again, with having deep set eyes, I find that if I don't brighten up this inner corner, I can look really tired and kind of moody and it really contributes to like F RBF. Um, so we'll tap that along as well. You can just see it just like brings a little bit of light to the under eye. Go around the nose. Where'd my acne go? Good, so you can just see like this side's brighter, this side's a little darker. 
So I went ahead, blended out the other side, and I feel like it looks pretty seamless, even though this is so full coverage. If you just use a little bit and spend a little extra time blending, I feel like it can still look very natural on a minimal makeup day. However, this is the problem. If I were to go out and have a rosacea trigger and my face were to flush, it would become very obvious where I have makeup and where I don't, because when my rosacea is triggered, my cheeks get super red. So I'm going to go in and take a little bit more concealer and just go over my nose in my cheeks so that if I get really hot while I'm out or I have a spontaneous flare for whatever reason, it's not like all of a sudden my cheeks look like they're on fire. So again, just taking like the tiniest amount, I'll just kind of go a little bit on the cheek there and down the nose. And I'm just gonna blend it with my finger because that's what I would normally do if I wasn't on camera. So we're just gonna kind of tap that in just to like even out the skin tone there. I'll tap it in my nasal labial fold as well. And the reason I don't put this concealer on right when I put on my initial concealer is because it would dry down too quickly and I wouldn't be able to blend it. So I like to do the concealer sort of in two steps. But if I weren't here talking, this whole thing from start to finish would take like 60 seconds. You can also see the bridge of my nose, my little indent where my glasses were sitting earlier. Okay, the skin tone has been evened out. Time to go in with the other things. While the concealer is finishing drying down, I'm gonna do my eyes, which again, on a easy, low maintenance makeup day is very fast. So I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in shade Strapless. I love these eyeshadow sticks because they are incredibly fast and you don't need to be very precise. I usually feel like for makeup to look really good, you wanna be precise, but with these sticks, you can kind of just smudge them out, especially for like a low maintenance day. So I usually just put a little bit on each eyelid. I'm sure if you're a makeup artist watching this, although why would you? This would be painful to watch. I'm just gonna kind of blend that out with my fingertip. I like that this is sort of a slightly purple taupe. I think it works well for lighter colored eyes, although I will say like purpley colors look amazing with brown eyes too. I also swatched the color on the back of my hands in case you wanna get like a better look at that. It's like slightly bronzy, slightly purpley. It's shimmery, uh, but like, day appropriate shimmer in my opinion, so very nice. That's it for her eyes, except for mascara, which is next. For mascara, it's like the same mascara I've used for the last four or five years. I've tried so many different mascaras, none, none. High-end other drugstore have beaten this. This is the Maybelline Lash Sensational. It is so good. It is something that gets me compliments on my eyelashes all the time, and I don't use lash growth serums. That's the brush, it's like a little plastic curved brush. And this to me offers both length and volume. I have a decent number of lashes, but they're pretty fair. And so this just kind of captures every single lash. And this is incredibly hard to do into the camera. So let me put this on, but I mean, just one coat, this versus that. So off camera, I went and put on a second coat. And no, I didn't put on fake lashes in between. Although, I mean, it really, I mean, this eye looks so much more open and bright. It, it really does kind of have like a falsies effect. And sometimes it's actually too much for a day. That's the only time I wouldn't reach for this if I really wanna have like a very mellow eye situation. But generally, I'm not mad about my eyes looking a little bit more prominent. And so I'm gonna go in and do this eye next. Something that someone pointed out to me once is most people, I'm left-handed, so most people take their dominant hand, do it, and then they'll flip like this. I cannot do that. I actually have to take my left hand and then to do my right eyelashes, I have to switch and use my right hand. I'm pretty ambidextrous in the operating room. I actually cut with my left hand and I sew with my right hand. It's, it's all wrong, but uh, yeah, I use my non-dominant hand to do my non-dominant eye. Ta-da! So mascara is completely done. I'm gonna go in and finish up my complexion. So I will wanna go in with powder to set down my concealer because I really don't want it to move throughout the day. But first I'm gonna go in with any other cream products. So I'm gonna go in with my cream blush. This is the Tower 28 Beach Please Cream Blush in shade Magic Hour. I used to think, oh, I have rosacea, I don't need to wear blush, but I like to be in charge of the color of my cheeks. When it's rosacea, it's just like one color red and it's kind of everywhere. So now that I've taken some of that color out, I'm going to have control over how it goes back in. So I'm just gonna use my finger, tap it, you know, wash your hands before you do your makeup. And then I like to focus my blush sort of in the front of my cheek, pretty close up to my eye. I don't like to use my 
blush to contour at all. I already have a very contoured face. This is what it looks like when you don't have buckle fat. I never had it removed just genetically. I don't have much. So I'm going in, I'm gonna kind of just tap that very lightly, kind of in a circular pattern up over the cheekbone. Same thing on the other side. So it's, it's subtle, but it's there. And I like it because I don't want to have really red rosy cheeks. I don't want to look like a clown, but I do want to have a little bit of color there to add life to my face. I'm also just going to tap a little bit over the nose to kind of mimic where the sun would naturally hit my face. I think it brings a little bit of youth to the blush application, but I just, I love this color. It's just a very neutral, rosy tone that I feel like looks good on so many different skin types. And I feel like everyone who I've recommended it to was like, Ooh, that was, that was a good pick Ellis. Something I really appreciate about both the Huda Beauty concealer, as well as this Tower 28 blush is that they don't just show up nicely on camera, but they look really good in person. And most of my interactions happen in person, whether I'm seeing patients in clinic or giving a lecture or meeting friends and so I really want people to be focusing on me when we're interacting and not really focusing on my makeup specifically or my skin specifically and I feel like they just very seamlessly give me a complexion that I can be really confident in. Now that all my cream products have been applied I'm going to go in with my Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder to just set things down so I can get a little more longevity out of the look but also to help any powder products that I apply on top blend out a little bit more seamlessly. So I just dump a little bit into the cap. I take this e.l.f. angled brush. I don't know what this one is. Angled blush brush. Okay, well, I'm not using it for blush. I'm just gonna stamp that in there and go ahead and press that up under the eyes, around the nose. I'm gonna grab a little bit more, just kind of go over the cheeks, the chin, areas that for me can kind of get a little bit oily. That's it. I do like to add a little bit of bronzer just to glow up the complexion a little bit. I'm going in with my Clinique, which you can't even tell anymore because I've had this for so long. Their True Bronzer Pressed Powder Bronzer in shade 02 Sun Kissed. So like hitting pan at this point. This is the Real Techniques powder brush and I'm just gonna grab a little bit in there and then I like to tap a little off on kind of the palm of my hand because I don't want it to be too pigmented, very light hand. You can always add more. And then I like to start out completely over my hair and sort of blend towards my cheek. So if I start here, just in case there's too much powder here, it's not like a big splotch. And so I do that. I like the ombre effect of it's like slightly bronzy orange into the pink of the blush. Like I was mentioning before, I don't really like to contour with my bronzer or my blush because I feel like it makes my face look too gaunt. And as we age, we lose facial fat. And if I look too contoured, then I also look kind of unhealthy. So I'm gonna go in through here. I'm gonna do a little bit up at the hairline. Oh God, the baby hairs, they just, they kill me. Be like a little bit under the jaw. We can always contour the jaw, that's that's always good. And then my final step is going to be a little bit of lip liner and lip gloss. So I'm going in with my Makeup Forever lip liner pencil and shade, Wherever Walnut. This is probably my most used pencil. It's what I use in 95% of my YouTube videos. Definitely needs to be sharpened, but we're gonna go ahead and put that on. It's basically my lip color, but a little more mauve-y. So go around the border first. So you can see the difference between the color of the pencil and the color of my lips. And then I actually just fill my lips in completely. This is a very long wearing lip pencil, which is one of the reasons I really like it and totally think it's worth like the slightly more investment than maybe like a drugstore lip liner. I could stop there, go for a totally matte lip, but I'm gonna go in with the Summer Fridays. This is their Lip Butter Balm in beige vanilla. This is one of my favorite lip products because it feels like it nourishes the lips, but it also adds like a nice, youthful, glossy sheen. I do advise for this brand, full, full disclosure. All right, let's get that. So a little bit there. I also love the shape of this lip. So it's like slightly curved, so it perfectly molds to your lip shape. <laughs> And that's it. This is my five minute makeup routine. I really hope you enjoyed it. If there are other types of videos you want to see from me in the future, please let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.